Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, hello, I'm Nolan. If not, as always, welcome back. A few weeks ago, I went down to an auction in Salem, Virginia, a couple hours south of here, and I bought a few cameras, one of which is an enormous 8x10 view camera. I've nicknamed her Big Bertha. Today's video will be all about this new old camera. I'll be taking pictures with it, trying to see if it even works anymore, and discovering what the photos look like that come off of it. I hope you are just as excited as I am for it, and I hope you'll join me. Here we go. And this is Big Bertha. Her lens contains all of the controls for the camera. Up top we have shutter speed controls, ranging from 1 150th of a second to 3 seconds. At the bottom we have our aperture values. They range from f45 at its smallest to f7.7 at its widest. So in order to cock the shutter you simply pull this lever up and then to fire the shutter you push it down and it fires. The entire lens board is removable. So by rotating these two keys, you're able to pull the lens board out. Here's a look inside the camera. You can see the ground glass, eight inches by 10 inches in the back. And you're looking through the bellows of the camera, which is the mechanism by which this camera is focused. So the first step in taking a photo is taking the negative holder, this piece here, into a completely dark room. You then remove the negative slides, like so. Load your either film negative or your darkroom paper into the negative holder. And still in the dark, you load the dark slide back into the negative holder. From this side, we see the bellow rails at the bottom. The bellows slide out on them and are controlled by the focus wheel. For landscapes, the bellows tend to be compressed, and for portraits with a closer focal distance, they tend to be extended. The bellows are light proof, and I believe they're made of leather, although I'm not entirely sure how to check that. So I've pulled focus on the camera, and you're looking at the ground glass screen in ambient light. You might be able to see my reflection, and as you can tell, there doesn't appear to be any image. But notice, as soon as I put the dark cloth over the camera, you're now able to see the beginning of an image. Now, this image, the preview on the ground glass, is inverted. So what's on the top is, appears to be on the bottom, and what's on the bottom appears to be on the top. Once you have the image focused against the ground glass screen, you're then able to take the picture. Finally, so we take our negative holder and we insert it into the camera. We pull back the ground glass screen, slide it in with our negative or our photo paper facing the lens, slide it down, and it snaps in place. Then we're able to remove the dark slide here, and we're able to take our picture like so. That's all there is to it. Now, it's taken me several tries to get the image right. So now I'll show you a few of my early images on this camera, and then what I'm making now on Big Bertha.
Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed Big Bertha just as much as I did. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like this video and please subscribe. Shooting pictures on Big Bertha is very difficult. In today's video, I used darkroom paper, which you usually make darkroom prints on, loaded into the back. If I wanted to make replications of these prints, I would need negatives to shoot on. One piece of negative film for Big Bertha costs $15 for black and white, and color is around $25 a sheet. If you would like to support my pursuit of photography and my pursuit of shooting negative film on Big Bertha, head to the link in the description below. I have monthly subscriptions available if that's of interest to you, and as a thank you for your support, I'll send you either a framed print in the mail each month or a special lock screen content that I've made for your phone or your computer in your email. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you next week. Take care.